the H2 Starfire engine explained. Observe the parts involved. The oil seals, the front seal bearing gear oil housing, the front bearing, the front synchronizing gears, more oil seals, the seal gear intake housing, the female intake compression isolator rotor, the male intake compression rotor, the hydrogen inlet port, the intake housing, the intake temp sensor, the intake manifold, the mid-rotor shims, the intake compression pre-chamber transfer tube combustion exhaust housing, the female combustion exhaust isolator rotor, the male combustion power exhaust rotor, the O2 sensor exhaust manifold, the two spark or glow plugs, the rear combustion exhaust housing, the rear rotor shims, the rear bearings, the rear bearing seal housing, more oil seals, the upper rotor shaft, and lastly, the lower rotor output shaft. Next, as we zoom in, we have the combustion exhaust side. Note, this is one half of the combustion housing exhaust port. Moving towards the center, we have the high pressure inlet port on pre-chamber tube to combustion chamber, as seen intake compression side. Next, the pre-chamber tube from compression to combustion, as seen in middle of housing. Lastly, the high pressure outlet on combustion chamber, as seen in transparency through housing to combustion exhaust side, leading to the other intake compression side. Next, we have the pre-chamber combustion side view, beginning with the spark or glow plug ignition point. Then the high pressure outlet port from pre-chamber tube with view from combustion side, connecting to the pre-chamber tube to combustion, and then to the high pressure inlet port to pre-chamber tube with view from combustion side. Lastly, on the other side, we have the exhaust port. Notice, tapering out away from exhaust port creates negative pressure behind escaping exhaust gas. Example, two-stroke expansion chamber. Next, we have the view of the hydrogen inlet port, accompanied with the O2 sensor and the exhaust manifold. On the other side is the view of the intake compression side, with intake temp sensor and intake manifold with unrestricted wide open throttle function. Next is the intake compression front view. Note, hydrogen is allowed to escape into the female intake compression isolator rotor cavity. This does not require a fuel injector and is an intermittent flow function controlled by pressure exceeding intake of compressed air and the female intake compression rotor cavity. This gives you an equaling function to pulse and bandwidth within a fuel injection system without the fuel injection. Note the compressed air in dark blue where the male intake compression rotor's paddle is compressing the air into the closed cavity behind it, drawing in intake air for the next compression cycle. Next, we see the intake air and fuel are now mixing at a high velocity rate for maximum efficiency as the rotors join together. And then the intake air and fuel are now forced in at high velocity to the pre-chamber which leads to the combustion chamber below. The intake air and fuel communication is now blocked off by rotating intake compression rotors. This is a cold temp forced induction feature to the combustion chamber below. At this point, the intake compression rotor assembly has closed off the pre-chamber inlet port and combustion is occurring in the pre-chamber and combustion chamber below. A transparent view of all three layers simultaneously. Top, intake compression layer. Middle, pre-chamber assembly. Bottom, power exhaust. Power exhaust rotor is now at point of ignition due to rotation exposing compression gases to spark glow plug. Hydrogen and oxygen now ignite forcing the rotor to spin away from its closed cavity. Exhaust gases are forced out by rotating combustion exhaust rotor and two-stroke type expansion design, creating negative pressure. 
This is a high EGR system, which allows exhaust gas steam back into intake to help seal off gaps and lower combustion temperatures. If you don't reach the threshold temperature for NOx, it's not created. Power exhaust rotor is now at point of ignition due to rotation exposing compression gases to spark glow plug. Hydrogen and oxygen now ignite, forcing the rotor to spin away from its closed cavity. A transparent view of all three layers simultaneously. Top, intake compression layer. Middle, pre-chamber assembly. Bottom, power exhaust. Red illustrates power exhaust rotors at the back of the engine. Dark blue and green illustrate air and fuel mixing for forced induction to the pre-chamber in middle of the engine. Blue rotors illustrate intake compression rotors in front of the engine. Green illustrates intake compressed air and fuel have now been blocked off. The mixture is moved into the closed cavity of the pre-chamber slash combustion chamber. Green and red illustrate that intake compressed air and fuel have now been ignited in the closed cavity of the pre-chamber combustion chamber. The expanding gases force the lower rotor to spin clockwise, clockwise from closed cavity expanding gases. All internal components in this view are made of aluminum and stainless steel with a coating that resists corrosion and embrittlement of metals. Note. Since there is no physical contact or friction in these components, you don't have damage to the coating. Also note, a conventional filtration system on the intake prevents particles from contaminating cycles like a conventional engine. Bearings maintain 5 tenths of 1 thousandths of an inch, and parts rotate at 2 to 4 thousandths tolerance, which means insufficient time for the pressure or volume to escape. The higher the RPMs, the less time to escape. This technology functions on the principle of time versus pressure versus volume. Not enough time for pressure or volume to escape. Note. Notice the red power rotor's paddle is being forced down with expanding gases with a much larger fulcrum point from the center axis. This allows the engine to produce more horsepower and torque than conventional engine technologies without the risk of things such as pre-detonation before top dead center, which damages piston engines with hydrogen. This engine is a linear functioning engine, meaning everything is designed to move one direction. Flash out within turbine fans with hydrogen. If you have a failed fuel injector that enriches the cycle, it can cause explosions and or auto-ignition events in combustors that can destroy stator and rotating blades in the fan assembly. These are severe safety concerns not present in this technology. The value proposition, unlimited applications, zero harmful emissions capable, runs on hydrogen, 120 pound engine, 400 plus horsepower, 500 plus feet-pounds torque, idle 1,000 revolutions per minute, redline 25,000 RPMs, air-cooled engine, oil change interval 50,000 miles, gyroscopic effects canceling, controlled combustion, incredible fuel efficiency, unmatched power to weight, reduced manufacturing cost, self-supercharging capability, ultra-high altitude capability, Thermal efficiency greater than 60% plus. Parasitics reduced by 80% plus. Mechanical efficiency greater than 90% plus. Skip fire technology. Multi-fuel capability. No oil leaks or cross-contamination. No poppet valves or cams. No piston rings. No apex seals. One-fourth the cost of fuel cell. One-fourth the cost of all electric car batteries. Ultimate range extender. Extraordinarily durable. Lower maintenance cost. Lower cost of ECM. Better user experience, aerospace, booster systems, hybrid planes, UAVs, personal aircraft, generators, portable and municipal, commercial trucking, automotive, agricultural, marine, recreational, lawn mowers, power tools, construction, commercial equipment, Department of Defense.
We designed this technology for the love of humanity and the environment. We hope you've enjoyed the overview of our technology. Thank you kindly. If you are an accredited corporation or individual, feel free to contact us for opportunities.